would Albert Einstein plead for a vision that exhibits, 1, childlike curiosity and 2, exhibits the symmetry in nature, and, 3, is the culmination of a child's visual thinking, whose audiometric analog is, unequivocally, the prelude to also scratch Zarathustra, and is in fact the uncontestable physical theory of E pluribus enum. Would Albert Einstein express himself with great passion on the question of the making of a motion picture for children worldwide? These are extraordinary times, and we face an extraordinary challenge. Our strength as well as our convictions have imposed upon this nation the role of leader in freedom's cause. Now going on around the world between freedom and tyranny, the dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957, the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere who are attempting to make a determination of which road they should take. Since early in my term, our efforts in space have been under review. With the advice of the Vice President, who is Chairman of the National Space Council, we have examined where we are strong and where we are not, where we may succeed and where we may not. Now it is time to take longer strides, time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe we possess all the resources and talents necessary, but the facts of the matter are that we have never made the national decisions or marshal the national resources required for such leadership. We have never specified long-range goals on an urgent time schedule or managed our resources and our time so as to ensure their fulfillment. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. In conclusion, let me emphasize one point. It is not a pleasure for any president of the United States, as I'm sure it was not a pleasure for my predecessor, to come before the Congress and ask for new appropriations which place burdens on our people. I came uh, with, uh, to this conclusion uh, with some reluctance. But in my judgment, this is a most serious time in the life of our country and in the life of freedom around the globe. And it is the obligation, I believe, of the President of the United States to at least make his recommendations to the members of the Congress so that they can reach their own conclusions uh, with that uh, judgment before them. You must decide yourselves as I have decided. 
And I am confident that whether you finally decide uh, in the way that I have decided or not, that your judgment, as my judgment, is reached on what is in the best interests of our country. meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of about a half a century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except at the end of them, advanced men had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then less than two months ago, during this whole 50 year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait, if this capsule history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. We shall send to the moon, 240,000 miles away, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked.